proven journeyman Martez Logan. And here he is yet again. There are few fighters who have ever appeared on ESPN Boxing more than Emmanuel Gustis. He is now 31 years old, 31 wins, and you can completely ignore the 27 losses. He has fought more world champions and contenders on short notice or in foreign countries or under any circumstances than any fighter of the modern era. Take a look at the listing of his last five fights. He's coming off yet another controversial decision loss, which once again, ringside observers felt he had won. Let's flash back to January on Friday Night Fights, and he had a sensational knockout of Jaime Rangel. It came in round number 10 with a big right hand. It was a feeling that only Emmanuel could describe this way. I don't know too many big words, so really, but it's, it's like on a hot day, just having an ice cream truck come down, open the doors, and just stand right there in front of an ice cream truck, and everybody else is, you know, soaking wet with sweat and passing out, and I'm right there. They got all the cool air blowing over me. That's how I felt. Martez, Logan is his opponent. Ironically, Logan is starting to have a carbon copy career to Augustus. He's only 22 years old, but he fights all the time as the underdog against top-tier opposition. And back in November, he had a televised upset of previously undefeated Americo Santos. He then had two penalty deductions, cost him draws, and lost two fights to former world champions after that. It is a scheduled eight-round fight. Richard Gonzalez is the referee. Okay, gentlemen, you receive your instructions in the dressing room. I expect a good, clean fight. Protect yourself at all times. Obey my commands at all times. Touch them up. The ring experience, I give Logan a lot of credit for having gone through one of the most ridiculous schedules the past three years. But it's tough for anyone to compare ring experience with Augustus. He's been against Floyd Mayweather, Jesus Chavez, Leo Doreen, Alex Trujillo, Mickey Ward was a fight of the year, Teddy Reed, and many, many more. But to his credit, Logan has fought four world champions, while Augustus has bettered him in that department, having fought six. Under normal circumstances, we'd be sitting here talking about the experience of Logan and raving about it, but against Emmanuel, so much on the other side of the ledger. You will see movement out of Emmanuel, in and out movement. You won't see that movement out of Logan. You'll see retreating. You'll see defensive posturing. You'll see looking for spots to trap Augustus. It's hard to trap a man who can jitterbug in and out and has quick hands like Augustus. Both these fights are very similar. Similar records we talked about. Logan, one fight below 500. Augustus, four fights over 500. Both have a lot of experience. Logan, 48 fights. Augustus, 64. Both durable through the career. Both have four top fighters. Take fights on quick notice in other people's backyard. Both know how to fight and how to go rounds. They both fight anyone, anywhere, anytime. A lot of similarities with these two fighters. Interestingly enough, many times in all those appearances on ESPN, as Logan backs him up with the jab, it has been Emmanuel Augustus who has worn the animal print trunks. Tonight it is Logan, and Augustus is in the gold with black trim. Logan has lost four in a row, three of them, ten round decision. One was to a former world champion, Augustus, has lost two of his last three. One of them a bad decision, I think most accounts. Exchange there, left hand at the end from Logan. Augustus said this is a do-or-die fight for him. Of course, we have heard that before. And he usually comes up with a win in those spots and many times follows it up with a disappointing and controversial decision loss. But right now, Augustus is taking the tack where he'll go in and out. And he's being invited in in spots, and he's using experience to recognize that as Logan just covers up in spots, Augustus can walk right in. When you have a guy going in and out on a regular basis like Augustus has done this round, if you're Logan, you look to catch him coming in or catch him going out. One of the 
big differences right here. Logan needs to be set to punch. Augustus, no. He punches from different angles on the move. They are scheduled for eight. Emmanuel Augustus, Martiz Logan coming to the end of round number one on Wednesday Night Fights. Time. This Memorial Day. Night Fights presented by the new Just For Men hair color knocks out the gray better than ever. And in part by X-Men 3, The Last Stand, May 26, only in theaters. And Singular, raising the bar. Wednesday Night Fights at the Mohegan Sun Arena. Emmanuel Augustus, 31 years old, one of the most skilled and athletically gifted fighters with the lowest career standing you will ever see. 27 losses for Emmanuel Augustus, but he has been in against world champions and top contenders, and many of those losses coming in controversial fashion. You know, we've been talking about Augustus. I have to mention, bring out what I think is just an unbelievable record and stat. Logan, just incredible activity. 48 fights in three and a half years. As a pro, and you see the 48 fights, you'd have to think, Joe, that he's fairly old, maybe in his 30s. You never would guess that he's only 22 years old with that many fights in such a short amount of time. Yeah, he has turned into the ultimate journeyman opponent. And, you know, you almost get the sense when you look at Martez Logan's record that, boy, you know, what does he do? Whatever the manager says, he just says yes, yes, yes. He can never say no. But this is what he likes. He likes fighting this often and against the upper echelon fighter. But what he likes right now is that he needs to be set to punch on those feet. And right now he's getting a little help because Augustus is not using the angles right now, not using his legs like he was the first round. Augustus is standing right in front of Logan. Guy who needs to be set to punch loves that. And you can see a moment ago, Logan, I think, understands he might be a notch slower with his hands than Augustus. So what he's doing is trying to time him like that. He's trying to make sure he doesn't waste anything. When he lets those punches go, he's trying to make sure it's at the right time. Timing can beat speed. I think Logan is trying to roll in Augustus, as you can see right here. And when Augustus gets ready to punch, that's when Logan's going to look to nail him. Catch him in between a combination, Joe. Landed a couple of left hands moments ago. Now Augustus goes to the body with the right hand. And trade right there. Right now, Augustus a little freer with his hands. Letting more of them go. But so far, Logan trying to be more accurate. Not waste anything. He's not letting anything go unless he thinks it has a good chance of landing. So far, a much more in control Emmanuel Augustus than we've seen in the past. At the end of this round, we'll give you a glimpse of some of the extreme moments in the career of Emmanuel Augustus and why it is that he has that label of the free-spirited, unconventional action fighter. Logan took this fight only on 10 days' notice, but, you know, he's done that many times. Actually, he waits for the that's last just, minute that's just call. another day of work. Well, he waits for the last minute call because with a record like that, he knows he has to be in the gym ready to go. So let's take a closer look at both fighters, and the fighter focus on Martez Logan shapes up this way in something Teddy discussed. 44 fights since 2003. Very, very active 22-year-old fighter. And as for Emmanuel Augustus, married with two children. In fact, he just had a new son born on May 10th. Emmanuel Jr. He likes to entertain in the ring. Does he ever? Let's show you some of the magical moments of Emmanuel Augustus. This was against Courtney Burton in a fight that he was utterly robbed in one of the worst decisions ever. And then how about the double punch he threw against Ray Oliveira? Watch out. Here it comes. Right there. The jitterbug, the step over, the uppercut. Teddy always oh, entertained. Yes, he is. That's part of his game. When you're not experienced, you're very relaxed in that ring. So relaxed. Pick it up. 31 years old now. He says everybody talks about hitting that 30-year-old mark 
and you start going downhill in the sport. I don't want any part of that, he says. See if age catches up with Emmanuel Augustus at some point. Of course, he's been in so many tough spots, so many short notice fights, and a career that has stretched over 11 years. There was a 22 day stretch in 1998 in which he fought in Denmark, New Orleans 12 days later, and England 10 days later, and went 2 0 oh, 1 with two knockouts. Well, these guys have to think in some ways that they're looking in the mirror at a reflection of each other with their records, with their way they've gone about their careers, the level of fighters they fought, the things they deal with mentally in a career that you have to take fights on short notice in other people's backyards. A lot of similarities here. A lot of difficulties for both guys. You know, we think about Logan having the disadvantage taking his fight on short notice, but let's not forget, as Augustus starts to warm up a little bit here, throwing a lot of punches, but not getting through clean all the time because Logan knows how to defend. When you're as durable as Logan and had as many fights without being stopped, only being stopped one time in all those fights, you know defense. He does. He knows how to survive. Emmanuel went to the side and dropped in a right hand, but he's thrown off easily a good 30 punches in the past half minute. So to the body with a right hand there, that score. Tries to uppercut to split the guard before Logan falls forward trying to tie up, and Emmanuel gets loose again with a left hand. We said it earlier. Augustus is more free-willing. He'll let his hands go even if some of them are wasted just to keep his man busy, to capture the judge's eyes, and to set up other punches. Logan, not so. He doesn't let anything go. He's much more conservative, unless he thinks it's not going to be wasted. Right now, it's not serving him well. It's allowing Augustus to have a good run. Very good run. Non-stop here in round number three. Logan tries to train, and you saw Augustus went upstairs and scored. Look at the punches this round. This is in real time punch track, and you see Augustus just about to go over 100, thrown in the ass. Oh, there's a left hand by Logan, as now they trade against the ropes. But what Logan's doing, we touched on it. He doesn't want to waste anything. He's finding the right spots. What he's trying to do is time the quick Augustus now and punch him between the shots. And now Augustus, as he's standing there, may be admiring his work. Welcome to the wonderful world of Augustus. Bust out the jitterbug here in round number four. The always entertaining a cult hero among the diehard fans. And Richard Gonzalez, the referee, is going to take some time Got too much grease on his face. to deal with the grease on the face of Augustus. And you can see there, Teddy, that Augustus really started getting hot in that third round through 140 punches. He was starting to do that back and forth sway where he kind of changes modes and becomes the real unorthodox, unconventional fighter. Well, Augustus, the great traveler that he is, knows how to read a map. And he reads the roadmap of his opponent. And in this case, the roadmap of Logan told him, you can get busy, he's going defensive, he's allowing you to get your motor running. You don't have to tell Augustus twice to take advantage of the writing on the wall when it's inside the ring. Augustus sat with us yesterday and he said, you know, I always feel like I have to KO a guy, that I have to take him out to win, and that it's always on his mind, saying to himself, don't get anxious, but knock him out. You know, when you've had 48 fights like Logan, and you have a record of 22-23, of two in the morning here, in the head of Logan, when you have that kind of record and you get into the mold of taking fights on quick notice, almost after a while, it's not as important as it is to a better record fighter winning or losing. What's important is you get action, that you're working, that you're not getting stopped. And you start to get a mentality that you do just enough to lose. You have to watch to see if Logan has that mentality now 
Of course, Augustus is doing some of that showboat like you talked about before. Here it comes. The time has arrived. He makes that decision in his head when he's going to turn it on, and here we are in round four, and clearly the switch is flipped. You know, most fighters, the eye is on the prize of winning. But when you're a guy like Logan and you got that kind of record, and you survive with everybody, after a while, you think more about surviving and fighting again three weeks a month later than really the urgency of winning. Five consecutive right hands. Emmanuel shifts, turns it over, and goes back to work. But look for the experience of Emmanuel to tell him somewhere along the line, maybe to go downstairs to Logan, who, as we said, one of his strengths, maybe his greatest strength, is being good defensively, and now Logan switches to the southpaw stance. Stop, stop, stop. Come on. Let me do that. Right? Oh, now, now, here's what always happens during an Emmanuel Augustus fight. You heard Richard Gonzalez said, stop, don't be doing that. Don't be doing what? He's not allowed to fight the way he wants to fight? There have been moments in the career of Emmanuel Augustus where referees just don't align with his style, and he's actually been DQ'd. So something to monitor here tonight. Two right hands come in. Logan fires back. Good way to finish up the round. I think it happens to a lot of guys over 50. Augustus was carrying the round, and then all of a sudden, Logan started coming back with his own, trying to time Augustus in the middle of one of those runs. Round number five, Joe Tessitore, Teddy Atlas with you on Wednesday night fights the always entertaining Emmanuel Augustus against the very durable ultimate journeyman, Martez Logan. There are the average punches landed, and you can see Augustus in the last two rounds brings it up to 46. Goes to the body, doubles up the right hand, switches over to the right, and lands the left. You know, again, it's not just about physicality here in this ring. Showboating, Logan tries to fire up, and classic Emmanuel Augustus. Well, that's called the Matrix move. He said yesterday that he would be tempted to bust out something new. Oh, and a left hand comes in, and Logan was through the ropes for a moment. You know, in a way, Augustus is such a smart guy, he understands not just the entertainment part of it, but through all his experiences, he understands who maybe he can get away with this kind of stuff. This is the first time he's not in there with a top-notch record fighter. He's in there with a record fighter of 22, 23, and 2. I think that Augustus feels more comfortable doing this kind of behavior and figures it'll be tolerated with this kind of fighter on a more steady basis than it would maybe with a fighter with a glossy record. Agreed. He's the attraction. Yeah, in other words, he figures, I gotta do something to spice this up. And I don't think people will mind me doing it if I'm doing it with a guy who brings a record that doesn't excite anybody. I will excite people. I will take advantage of that. Again, the mentality is so important in that squared circle. Not just the physical and technical elements. And you can see the mentality of Logan with that method we've talked about. He's not carrying the fight. He fights at the end of the round. He fights when he's forced to fight. Almost like he's got the mentality that it's okay to be second best. There's not an urgency to get that golden ring, that W. Augustus now with Logan in the corner. Tries to fire that straight right right through the guard. Goes to the body with the left hand. See, while Logan's looking for perfect spots, Augustus is letting his hands go, and he's creating spots. The spots aren't there in the first two or three punches with Augustus. Just watch, that's throw away punches. But the third and the fourth get in, because the first three set up the later punches, create an opportunity for the later punches. Three rounds to go, and then we will tee up our main event, and it is a good junior bantamweight fight. Message boards where boxing fans believe that he could be in against the pound for pound elite, but will never get the chance. Here he is, round number six, against the journeyman Martez Logan, and putting on a show at the Mohegan Sun. 
Hogan has been known to get inside with his head a little bit and get involved in some head classes. He was cut three fights ago. We'll see whether or not that comes into play these last couple rounds. Covering up here against the ropes. And Emmanuel free to throw right. right hands. He did land right there, a good solid right hand. Well, he doubled up the right hand. You see a lot of fighters double up the left. Augusti doubles up the right. Downstairs, upstairs. And a sensational knockout doing that back on Friday Night Fights in January. A good. knockout that he describes like opening up an ice cream truck on a hot summer day. Good job by Augusti switching downstairs and hurting Logan in spots. When you have a good defensive fighter in front of you, the head may move, but the body doesn't. Scoring at will now. Two right hands after that jab landed flush and backed him into the ropes. Now the left hook. Augustus would be well served. Even though he's carrying this round very well, he would help himself by going downstairs to the body of Logan. Right hand comes in, doubles up the left hand again and scores. Again, you see that mentality. Obviously, Logan, having fought four world champions, only stopped in one fight in 48 fights. He knows how to fight. But most of his concentration is on how to survive. He has the mentality, it's okay, it's acceptable to be second best, as long as I don't get stopped. There's more urgency in Logan, Joe, not to get stopped than there is to win. A journeyman survivor who's been in against former world champions and top-tier contenders and now faces a fighter that he could end up having a career like. Nine years the junior to Emmanuel Augustus. Now Logan tries to get off. Emmanuel unaffected. Logan switching. Logan switching to the southpaw position. And as we said earlier, only letting his punches go in spots. And the spot he's looking for right now is the time Augustus is getting a little greedy. When Augustus is inside, punching, look for Logan to try to nail him in between some shots. Augustus must have some gum stuck to his shoe. Trying to get rid of it. Up on the toes now. Looking to close out what has been a very strong sixth round. See, when Augustus gives those angles every once in a while and goes to the side, then Logan can't get off because he needs the man in front of him to be set to punch. Good exchange there. When something is real... Men hair color. Round seven, the always entertaining Emmanuel Augustus in the gold with black coming off of a big six round against 22-year-old Martez Logan in the animal print. Teddy's scorecard, 59-55. Augustus sweeping things after the second round. Logan a little more active than he was in the sixth round. And the only time that Logan is going to let anything go is when he has Augustus right in front of him in the midst of throwing. Logan figures that's the best shot to catch Augustus, to time him in midstream or in mid punch. If Augustus would use his legs and go to the side, which he does in spots, Logan would never throw back. Because Logan can only throw back but his feet are set to allow him. He can't deal with guys that move to the sides. He does not adjust his legs well. Logan now deciding to stay in that southpaw stance. Fires off the left hand of the body from that southpaw stance, but return fire from Augustus right back at him. Big difference here tonight. Augustus has more options. He's a little quicker. And he still believes he has a career. He still wants to get to a title fight. He still behaves like a guy that's going to go and get that title fight. Logan behaves like a guy who just wants to go rounds. Come on, just work it. Stay tight, not work. Let your hands go. 
there are fighters in recent years who are less skilled and less accomplished that have fought for the world title than Emmanuel Augustus. It has been the inconsistencies and some of that coming on his own shoulders from Augustus that has held him back from doing so. Well, some of those guys are right out there in the record book, and I would love to see, and I'll make a statement now, to see Augustus get a world title shot. And you can use examples in history. Buster Drayton, Freddie Pendleton, Kelvin Seabrooks. They all had similar type records and got world title shots and won world titles. We'd love to see Augustus get that opportunity. I think he deserves it. Opportunity there with the right hand and he scored with it. I agree with you, Teddy, and you're not alone. There are many fans out there that would like to see it too. There's that body shot. shot. And if he stays on that body, he might do something that's very difficult to do. Get rid of Logan. Logan sticks out the tongue, and you know he was affected by that left hand to the body. Right now, if I was Burton, I would concentrate on two punches, downstairs and uppercuts, while Logan is leaning forward. Phoenix Suns are going to be looking for a knockout punch. The NBA... Co In order for me to win, man, I got to knock him out. Take, take, take it away from the judges. You know, I have to take the decision away from the judges. You know, I, I can't afford um, for the fight to go to distance and it's called a draw or I get a loss. You know, so, you know, I gotta knock the guy out. If I don't knock the guy out, then I'm not gonna win the fight. That's, that's in my mind. He had a 10th round knockout. In the final round on Friday Night Fights back in January, can he do it again in this eighth and final round against Martez Logan? Let's see if Augustus turns it on. You know, his philosophy, his theory of thinking that you just heard on that tape of Augustus that he has to knock a guy out. The only thing that's true now about that, I disagree with him. Usually he's right, but that's when he's fighting guys that have great records and they're local fighters and they have a home base. That's not the case here. He does not have to win by knockout to get the fight. What he needs to do by knockout is to get the big fights, to get the attention of the promoters to move forward and get the fight that he's looking for, the defining career fight. Right hand from Logan, and you can see the acting from Augustus. Again, look for Logan when he does throw, it'll be in the midst of an exchange from Augustus. Had success downstairs to the body at the end of that seventh round. Logan is a game guy. But a game guy in an effort towards losing. Not a game guy in a commitment to winning. He will take punches, probably more punches, and try to just survive and doing enough to lose than he would if he took chances and threw more. He'd probably take less punches then because his opponent would be a little less offensive. But it's the mentality. Right hand. There's the body shot, and you can see Logan turning over the referee, trying to complain before he ties up. Augustus gets the last punch landed in that exchange. Logan comes forward again. Again, if Augustus is going to get that knockout with 35 seconds left, I believe it's going to have to be attacked to a body shot. Very durable opponent in Martez Logan. Guy who knows to survive against the better competition. Going to trade now. We come to the last 10 seconds of this eight round fight. It's not There's a right hand. It's not a surprise that Logan would exchange now. It's mentally He's a guy who's a little deficient because he knows it's the last round. So he will let it all hang out. And you let it all hang out. Martez Logan has had 20 fights in less than a year and a half. 
but he's probably never seen anything like this. Emmanuel Augustus. We will come back and hear from the judges. Stephen A. Smith did. Tonight, quite frankly, her... Cap Emmanuel Augustus threw over 220 more punches through 651 headshots. Teddy Atlas's scorecard after eight rounds. Augustus Logan, he's got Augustus on top, 79-73. Let's head up to the ring to the generous one, Joe Antonacci. Boxing fans, after eight rounds of action, we go to the judges' scorecards. Judge John McKay scores the bout 77-75. Judges Frank Lombardi and Tommy Kazmarek both see the bout 79 to 73 for your winner by unanimous decision, Emmanuel Ya Augusta. It's a nice feeling for him to have those scorecards read and he's on the winning side. Never had anything to worry about. 32nd win in the career of Emmanuel Augustus. He wins it, unanimous decision over Martez Logan. When we come back, a real treat, undefeated